Chapter 13. Tell it. When they arrived at the cabin, Sky helped Dylan unload their hall. Wade came outside, excited to see what they found, and started hauling it into the house. Sky jumped from the back of the truck and picked up a box of food to take in. Dylan followed, but stopped a frown on his face. He stared at the living room light shining through the open window and grabbed a backpack he kept in the truck bed. He glanced at Sky. I can't go in there. Puzzled, Sky looked from him to the cabin and back again. What? Why? At that moment, Jesse stepped out the front door. Dylan raised a hand to stop him. Look, we don't know if I got infected. I need to stay away from the boy. Sky shook her head. You didn't get anything on you, we checked. Wade came out of the house for his next armful and stopped. What's going on? Dylan looked at his brother. We had a run-in with some sick. I think I'll stay out here for a few days. A few days? Sky asked. Dylan ran a hand through his hair. It's airborne too, and I was real close to them. Sky sat the box back down on the tailgate. But you said you'd been sick and fought it off. But we ain't sure. Sky groaned. I wish we knew more about this. I was sick too. Perhaps we're all carriers now and aren't aware of it. Whatever we are, Jesse hasn't gotten sick yet. Dylan, you don't have to do this. Dylan hesitated, bouncing the strap of his pack in his hand a few times. I have to. Just a couple nights then to make sure I ain't got the quick kind. He looked from Jesse's wide-eyed gaze to the ground and back again. If something happened to that boy cause of me. He shook his head. I'll be right here so I can help keep an eye out, maybe sleep in the truck bed. Sky nodded and guided Jesse into the house as Dylan called Wade over and told him what Sky had learned at the hospital. Jesse looked up at Sky. Is this my fault? Cause I'm the only one who hasn't been sick? Sky put the box on the table and turned to Jesse. No. It's no one's fault, it's just the way the world is right now. We have to be careful. Dylan is doing what he thinks is best. She smoothed back his hair and looked at the boxes piled around the room. Okay, buddy, somehow we have to fit all this food into this kitchen. Are you up to the challenge? Yeah. Before they'd gotten far, Wade came stamping in. The moment he shut the door, he opened his mouth. The information that Dylan shared with him about the ag flu disturbed him and brought up a flurry of conspiracy theories. It became clear this was one of Wade's favorite hobbies. While Sky and Jesse put away can after can of food, Wade spoke of terrorist attacks from other countries, of U.S. conspiracies against its citizens. By the time she opened the final box, Wade was certain it was clumsy scientists that caused the disease. Sky shelved the last can and high-fived Jesse. Wade had spewed theories on top of theories and stories Sky could never dream up in an entire lifetime. She kicked the empty boxes over to Wade, hoping they would slow him down. Can you get rid of these, please? Wade nodded and gathered them up his booming voice fading as he walked out the door. Sky sent an eye roll to Jesse, which he returned. But when Wade walked back into the house and shut the door, he started where he left off, if possible, more insistent about each fine point of his assumptions. Jesse had his hands to his ears as he hummed to himself. Sky put a hand to her throbbing head and her eyes narrowed. Dylan knew what he was doing when he left after telling Wade the news. This is probably the real reason he stayed outside. He was aware of what was coming. Wade, stop. We can't take it anymore. Please, please we want to get some sleep. Wade opened his mouth to object, but before he could say anything, Sky pointed to the front door. If you need to continue, you go outside and tell it to your brother, cause we can't we just can't anymore. Wade blustered. Now listen here, Sky, what if? Out, Wade. 
out now. Wade shook his head, his mouth turned down and headed outdoors. You just don't get it. When Wade wasn't back the next morning, Sky assumed he stayed outside with Dylan and smiled. Jesse and Sky went through the clothes and other items they scavenged. Jesse restrained himself, as usual, from any large reactions, but he couldn't hide the twinkle that came into his eyes as Sky showed him his new clothes. A smile curved the corner of his mouth when he spotted the model truck Kit Dylan had found for him. He darted a glance at Sky. That is for you, Jesse. Dylan got it for you. Jesse's voice filled with amazement. He did? Sky smiled through her sadness. Had no one ever gotten him a gift before? She ran her hand down his hair. Yes, he did. It's new. He cautiously reached out for the box, inspecting it from all sides. My friend had some. I helped him with them, and I always wanted one. And now, you have a truck, Sky said. This is a good one? It's a great one. Jesse would be preoccupied for the rest of the afternoon if not the day. Sky smiled and gave his thick, dark hair another soft tousel before leaving him to it. She laid the men's new clothes on the bed and put her own away. The past two days had been unlike anything she had ever imagined she would live through, but scavenging had given her an appreciation for things she'd never had before. And she had done her part, not just relied on Wade and Dylan to supply her needs. She lightly dragged her fingers across a t-shirt, a glow of pride filling her. Doubt in herself had overwhelmed Skye since this had begun, and it was nice to feel something else.